Hey guys, welcome to the Studiverse. My name is Dr. Noreen Stewart, and this is Stewart Learning. So in today's video, we're gonna focus on what are executive functions and why should we care? Today's video is for three people. First, we have students who wanna take power into their own hands and learn about what things that could be impacting their performance at school negatively. Two, parents, you're trying to figure out why is my child struggling with certain types of tasks? They can do some things well, but I don't understand why they can't do other things. And lastly, educators, giving you that framework to figure out what are these issues that I'm seeing with my student in the classroom and what is breaking down between them leaving the school and then coming back the next day. What are the things that we can be working on? So basically we're gonna demystify executive functions. So today is gonna to be a quick overview. In future videos, we'll dive into each of the specific executive functions and really get into the nitty gritty of them. But for today, let's start off with a little game, kind of a true or false, pick which one's right, which one's wrong. True or false, kids can outgrow executive function issues. False. Executive functioning issues don't go away over time. However, there are workaround strategies that students can use to overcome challenging situations. You can also help students learn how to leverage their strengths in order to overcome weaknesses. Question two, true or false, executive function issues and ADHD are the same thing. False. ADHD and executive functioning issues are not the same thing. People with ADHD may struggle with specific executive functions, but every person who has executive function difficulties does not necessarily have ADHD. Third and final question, which of the following can be signs of executive functioning issues? A, frequently forgetting what you wanted to say. B, Difficulty getting even the most routine tasks done on time. C. Frequently getting upset and angry when even minor things don't go as planned. Or D. All of the above. You guessed it. Maybe guessed it. It's okay if you didn't guess it, but it's all of the above. Executive function is like the CEO of the brain. It's in charge of a number of skills. So trouble with executive functioning can impact your ability to judge how long it'll take to do tasks, to think flexibly, control your emotions, and a whole lot more. So what are these pesky little executive functions? Executive functions are the mental skills that we need in life to effectively get things done. These skills are regulated by the frontal lobe portion of your brain. These processes enable us to plan, organize, and manage our time, pay attention during tasks, remember information, and control our impulses. So who benefits from executive function support? Most of us. So in the whole world of like executive functions, there's some researchers who feel that there are only like two. Some researchers who feel that there are some that are hot versus some that are cold. That being more no emotional versus being more cognitive. Then there's others who feel like there's more than like 50. What we're gonna focus on is one that is common practice at this point, which is 11 main executive functions. I'm going to give you a really quick overview of the 11 main executive functions. There's a ton of overlap and we'll discuss that more as we kind of break down each of these executive functions in detail in other videos as well. So first, let's start off with organization. It's one of those big like overarching umbrella ones. That's your ability to use a tracking system for important materials, information, and everyday items. Next, we have time management. Just being able to organize your schedule and accurately figure out how much time you will need to complete tasks and assignments with multiple parts and steps. Next, we have flexibility, which is being able to manage and adapt to unexpected situations when things change and they occur in a way that you didn't plan for. Next up, task initiation. It's being able to start working on a task without procrastinating. And then there is sustained attention, which is the ability to have continuous and consistent attention, focus on the tasks that need to be completed. So even when things become 
boring or you're tired or you're just completely like distracted and uninterested are you able to push through and keep doing what you need to do to get your task done now we're at planning slash prioritization that's the ability to create the steps needed to reach your goals and then we have response inhibition which is the ability to pause and think before we do something so we all have a little bit of that impulse control when it's like, I'd much rather go hang out with my friends, I'd much rather watch this, I'm just gonna watch TV for a little bit or do this or do that. Are you able to say, pause, I should do my work, let me just get that done real quick. Next up, emotional control. That's that ability to manage your feelings so they don't get in the way of you finishing work and achieving goals. Then we have working memory. It's the ability to hold onto the information needed to complete tasks related to learning, problem solving, and understanding multi-step assignments. And now we're down to our last two, which the reason why these two are last is because they're considered higher order executive functions, meaning the other ones really need to be intact and worked on first before you're really gonna be able to effectively achieve these. And the first of which is goal-directed persistence. So that's the ability to continuously work day to day towards a specific, realistic and attainable goal, regardless of being frustrated, bored or interrupted. It is also having the ability to pick different strategies if you encounter setbacks um, and need new ways to reach your goal. The last one we have is metacognition. Metacognition is the ability to review and think about how you previously completed tasks. So for example, that would be note taking, reading directions for assignments, test preparation, etc., and decide how to make it better for when you do it again in the future. So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow me on all my social media and subscribe to be part of the Stooniverse. Bye.